Today I'm going to do a video on the most boring topic imaginable. How to optimize your Unity VR game. Now, I don't usually do technical videos, but I just spent several weeks of my life trying to get my game to run on fucking potato. The graphical and processing power of mobile VR right now is a fucking joke, and somehow they want your game to look like this. But as I've learned, there are some ways to do it. So in this video, I'm going to share some of the tools and tips that I use to optimize my VR shit. And I'm going to be including links to tutorials and assets and everything you could possibly need in the description so you can apply it into your own stuff. So let's get started. Number one, don't do photorealistic games. Most of your optimization occurs before development even begins. Pick an art style with the assumption that you're going to work on shitty hardware from the early 2000s. If you don't do that, you could be setting yourself up for failure. There's a reason why Job Simulator looks pretty much identical on the Oculus Quest, while Robo Recall looks like this. So yeah, pick a visual style that looks cool and distinctive and won't fuck you down the road. Number two. Don't use post-processing. I know post-processing makes everything look beautiful, but you need to stop getting used to it. Post-processing is going to often make a bunch of things render twice when they don't have to, and you shouldn't make yourself deal with that. If you really like the look of your game with post-processing, then I recommend that you take a screenshot of your scenes with post-processing on, and then try to replicate the look of the screenshots with post-processing off. Number three. Adjust your goddamn project settings. Okay, open up Unity, and with me, adjust your project settings. Number 4. Turn GPU instancing on on every single material in your game. So most mobile VR hardware, including the Oculus Quest, support GPU instancing. And you don't need to know what it is, just make sure that every material in your experience has this checkbox turned on. Do it now. Number 5. Combine your meshes. Now this is a big one. If you're not a bubbling idiot, you're probably trying to use the least amount of textures and materials in your game. That is a good thing. Now the next thing that you have to do is put all of the meshes in your scene that use the same materials under the same game object and combine them into a single mesh. If you do this right across your entire experience, it's going to save you so much time. And I've added a link in the description to an asset that does this pretty well called Easy Combine. Number six, use Google Surat. Oh, Surat. I, I don't. I don't fucking. Google Surat is a really powerful and extremely under-advertised tool for VR optimization. Now, this is not going to be useful for everyone. Google Surat's main contribution is when you have an experience in which the player doesn't really move around a lot and they are confined to a small space. And what it does is that it takes multiple 360 pictures from a variety of angles and positions in your play area and combines them into a hyper-performant, low-poly mesh with a single draw call. So you can turn scenes that are like have millions of polys and dozens of draw calls into a single object. I have also added a video in the description that teaches you how to do this, as well as a link to another thing that you're going to need in the video, but they don't provide you. Just, 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 just click on a goddamn link. Number seven, amplify imposters, baby. Amplify Imposters is a really powerful Unity asset that lets you turn high-poly 3D models into basically a single quad. It reacts to lighting, it works exactly like a 3D model would, and it works pretty similar to Surat. They take a bunch of pictures from multiple angles of your 3D model and they turn it into a texture that updates in real time. Now, you can't just turn every single object in your scene into an imposter. This is specifically designed for objects that are further away from you. So if you have something like a really, really large statue really far away from the player and you want to turn it into basically a low poly asset, this tool lets you do it and I highly recommend it. Link in the description as always. Number eight, use static lighting. Real-time dynamic lighting 
is expensive and you want to be using as little as possible if not anything at all. Baking is a powerful tool that you should be using so make your mesh statics and bake away. Number 9. Set up occlusion culling. So there's a high likelihood that when people are playing your game they won't be seeing every single object in a scene at any given time. There could be things that are behind a wall or there could be things that are behind a mountain that are being rendered but they don't need to. Occlusion culling essentially makes it so objects that are being occluded by other objects are not rendered if they're not visible to the player and this is also going to save you a good chunk of performance. I linked a video in the description that also teaches you how to do this and occlusion calling is definitely something you should implement in your application. Number 10. Be ruthless about removing detail when needed. Now this may seem obvious but very often you will get emotionally attached with the look of a scene and you won't be able to get it to run. Sometimes the only way to do it is by removing detail ruthlessly. So if you've done all of the optimizations that I just mentioned in this video as well as others and you find yourself in a situation in which the thing simply won't run, get rid of detail. Remove the things that are not absolutely required for the scene and keep doing it until you reach your target. This is a painful part of the development process but sometimes you just have to delete your babies. Number 11, use more effective coroutines. If you use a lot of coroutines in your game, you should definitely download this plugin. More Effective Coroutines has a free version and it improves the garbage collection of coroutines. Basically, what you need to know is that it's going to make your coroutines run faster and it's really easy to set up. Highly recommend this one. Number 12, profile often. Your profiler is the window to the soul of your game and it's also your boy. Ideally, optimization is not something that you do at the end of a project, but it's something they're always doing throughout. So if you're working together with your profiler throughout development, you can spot performance issues early and fix them on the spot instead of having them accumulate. So try to profile often and fix performance issues the first time you see them instead of later on in development when they're all tangled. And the final one, number 13. Start using Unity's job system. Now this is pretty new and it's kind of weird to wrap your head around, but the job system is where Unity is headed long term. And if you build your game around the job system, you will see significant improvements. The Oculus Quest already makes use of it pretty well, and so will other mobile VR platforms. I included a link below to a video that explains what the job system is and how to use it. And it may not be something that you want to do now, maybe you just want to learn about the job system throughout the year and every now and then apply it here and there. But I think it's worth studying and it's worth learning and it's something that we will all have to learn how to use eventually. And there are some good performance gains to get out of it. Oh shit, I almost forgot one more. If your game has lots of textures, then use this technique called texture atlasing. It basically allows you to get a bunch of different textures and sprites and put them into a single large texture. It reduces the number of jar calls and it makes the game more optimized. I included a video in the description that teaches you how to do that as well. Thank you for watching. If you know of any other techniques that people can use to optimize their games, please let them know in the comments below. I still have no clue what this channel is going to be. I'm just doing videos that I think will be entertaining and useful. So let me know what you like. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, the bell button, subscribe, follow me on social media, and to join our community on Patreon. There's a lot of cool stuff happening there. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.